Kroger Tender Ray Beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony Transcribed. You know, one of these days when we come visiting at your house, we're going to bring some mighty grand news with us. We're going to say that famous Kroger Tender Ray Beef is available once more. Mind you now, that news is yet to be told. For those wonderful, fresh, and tender Kroger Tender Ray beef steaks and roasts are still hard to get. And you know why? Well, because it's difficult to obtain the top grades of grain fattened cattle that are used for Kroger Tender Ray beef. Yes, Kroger selects only the very top grades of grain fattened cattle. And then it's made naturally tender in just three days by the famous Kroger Tender Ray method. It's always fresh. Because through Kroger's own tender ray method, there's no need for wasteful aging or loss of savory juices. Now, there are the reasons Kroger tender ray beef is always fresh, always tender, always juicy. And one of these days in the near future, you'll be able to walk up to the meat counter of your Kroger store and get this beef that's so famous. Because no other beef so fresh can be so tender. Until that time, please remember... Right up to the day when you can buy Kroger Tender Ray beef again, Kroger will always bring you the very best beef that is available on the market. And now, Hearts in Harmony. Captain Harlow of the Rossville Police, because of his friendship with Johnny Keith, has agreed to question Freddie Lang privately in Penny Gibbs' home. He's doing so now. With the police captain and Freddie in another room, Penny and Professor Rogers wait impatiently in the living room. How long has it been now, Professor? Oh, well over two hours, Miss Gibbs. It's nearly midnight. When do you think it'll be over? Well, there's no telling. That police captain looked like a rather thorough fellow. He'll keep on talking to Freddy until dawn if he doesn't get what he wants before then. What can he be talking about all this time? Miss Gibbs, Freddy Lang is probably 20 or maybe at the most 22 years old. The last 14 to 15 years of his life have been nothing but trouble. It takes a long time to unburden yourselves of 15 years of trouble. Yeah, I guess it does. But the two hours he's been in there seemed like two years. Mm. Probably like 200 years to him. I don't doubt that, but I suppose it's going to be time well spent. Well, that's the general idea behind the spending of it. Captain Harlow is hoping to find that Freddy really isn't in serious trouble. You mean to prove that Freddy didn't rob Mr. Carney's store, I hope. Yes, I hope. But you don't have much confidence that he will, do you? Well, let me put it this way. I'm not going to condemn the boy until I know more of the facts. Mm -hmm. Say, you know, I'm... I'm beginning to wonder how much longer Captain Harlow is going to keep him in the other room. Yeah, his waiting is awful, isn't it? It isn't good. Is the fact that it's taking so long a bad sign? No, not necessarily. But you think it might be? Not any more than it might not be. In other words, you're not committing yourself. In these words and no others, I just don't know. They're not very encouraging words. Say, you really like Freddy, don't you? Is that wrong? I think so. What's wrong with it? He's a likable kid. Always a little thoughtless at times. Most of the time. But so are all of us at times. Then it's worse when we are because we should know better. You're much too generous, Miss Gibbs. It's one of your biggest faults. Of which I have many, of course. Several. <laughs> well, I don't claim to be perfect. I'm far from it, and I know it. Maybe that's why I kind of like Freddy. He's imperfection in its most perfect form. You're making a joke out of something quite serious, Miss Gibbs. Professor Rogers, Freddy Lang's no joke. He's an ill-adjusted, mixed-up, confused and embittered young man. But his attitude isn't his fault. It's the fault of people like you and me who know that there are young men and women like Freddie all around us but just don't want to do anything to help them. What's this the beginning of, Miss Gibbs? 
Are you hinting that you're, well, going to take Freddy under your wing, sort of reform him, reclaim him from among the cast-offs and show him where he has a place in the world? I'm no crusader, Professor Rogers, and I don't particularly like the sneer of ridicule on your face right now. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Gibbs. You misunderstood the look on my face. I... I'm only trying to say, don't get yourself worked up about Freddy. He's either not in half the trouble he seems to be in, or... Well, after Captain Harlow gets through with him in there, we're going to find out that he's a hopeless case. Professor Rogers, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. I like Freddy. You like him, too. Look, why don't you come from behind that wall of yours and admit it? Well, of course I like Freddy, and I want to help him. I'm going to do all I can for him. But I... I just don't want you to become involved in his problems. They're not yours, Miss Gibbs. They're his and mine, too. Because I'm... Well, I'm an uncle of his. I understand perfectly, Professor. But I'll have to ask you to understand me, too. As I said before, Freddy's troubles aren't his own fault. He needs help in order to straighten himself out. And if I can help him, just a little bit, I not only want to, but I'm going to. All right, Miss Gibbs. But if you get into difficulties yourself, don't say I didn't warn you. All right. It's a bargain so long as you don't say I told you so. <laughs> I knew I couldn't talk you out of anything. Well, you're getting to know me better every day. That's something to be thankful for. Well, let's not go into that, Professor. Of course not. Forgive me? Mm -hmm. Forgiven. Oh, when is Captain Harlow going to be through talking? I told you it might go on for hours. I'm getting kind of nervous just waiting. Want to go for a walk? No, we, we might be out just when the captain's through. Yes, I imagine it would be better if we stayed here. Uh, are you in the mood for music, Miss Gibbs? Not especially. You know, I haven't heard you play the piano in several weeks. Uh, it'll help pass the time. I suppose it would, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And pleasantly, too. Perhaps you'll even sing. Oh, you want everything, don't you? No, no, I'm getting a little upset with all this waiting, too. A little music and a song. I, I... understand. Anything's better than just waiting. <laughs> well, all right, how about this? Uh, you're going to sing, too, I trust. If I can trust you to listen. I'll listen. Then I'll sing like this. There should be a cottage... Not too big, not too small That little dream got nowhere at all There should be a doorbell And a kiss in the hall that little dream got nowhere at all. I wish my pillow wouldn't tell me what a chance I had. I wish the willow wouldn't whisper too bad, too bad. Sunday morning papers and a porch with a view. That little dream had something and it could still come true. That little dream got nowhere. You have a lovely voice, Miss Gibson. Uh, especially for passing away the time. <laughs> well, you wouldn't believe me if I argued any different. <laughs> no. Oh, Captain Harlow's coming out of the other room. Uh, at last. Well, Captain. I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long, Miss Gibbs, but I had a little difficulty in drawing the boy out. And he had rather a lengthy story to tell you, too, I imagine. Definitely, Professor Rogers. And what's the verdict? I'm afraid it's not going to be as pleasant as we'd hoped, Miss Gibbs. Well, what is it? No verdict at all. What do you mean, Captain? 
Just this, Professor Rogers. He robbed Jack Carney's store? No, Miss Gibbs. I'm absolutely certain he did not rob Carney's store. And I think I'm going to be able to persuade my superiors to accept my recommendation that Freddie be released from all suspicion. But that's the only good thing that's come out of my talk with the boy. I see. Well, you talked with him for hours. There must be a lot of bad that came out of it. A great deal, Professor. The boys confessed a series of crimes in New York. I think he'll have to be turned over to the New York police to be punished or set free as they see fit. Oh, how awful. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Gibbs. I know you hoped the boy was innocent. But I'm afraid you have a criminal in your house. Oh, good evening, Jake. Come in. I certainly will. Jed, what's wrong? You know very well what the matter is. Where's that boy? Oh, he's in the study. Professor Rogers is talking to oh, him. Get him out of here, Penny. Look, Jed, I thought we'd been all through this. I know I... that, Penny. And I've just been through the most awful session with Captain Harlow, the police. And I don't think I went down there snooping either, because I didn't. I just ran into the captain on the street, and he told me about being down there to see Freddy. And uh, what else did he tell you? That the boy is wanted by the New York police, and for good reason. Yes, Jed, he is wanted by the New York police. But I don't think it's, it's worth a good reason. Frankly, I still don't think he's done anything wrong at all. Look, Professor Rogers has been talking to him for an hour. He's going to get the real truth. And the real truth is the boy is a criminal and ought to be locked up. I don't think so. And I think Professor Rogers is just... Well, what you think? You're just about to know. Here comes Professor Rogers now. Good evening, Mr. Billings. I didn't expect to find you here. No, guess you didn't. But don't let my being here stop you from telling Penny the truth. The boy's a criminal, isn't he? Oh, I hesitate to call him a criminal, Mr. Billings, but he has committed certain crimes. I'm afraid he's going to have to be taken back to New York. What did I tell you, Penny? Isn't that what I said? Yes, Jed, that's what you said. But you listen to me, both of you. Maybe you won't fight for Freddy, but I will. I, d I don't know how. I don't know what I'll have to do. But I'm not going to let Freddie Lang go to jail. Why is Penny taking Freddie Lang's part? Why doesn't she take Jed's advice and get rid of Freddie? Isn't she asking for trouble of her own trying to solve Freddie's problems? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. There's a grand and glorious day coming soon. That's the day you'll be able to step up to the meat counter of your Kroger store and say, Kroger Tender Ray Beef, please, and get it. Yes, one of these days soon, fresh and tender Kroger Tender Ray Beef will be available again. But while you're waiting for that day to arrive, just remember that Kroger will always supply you with the best beef that is available. And remember that your Kroger store offers you a tantalizing selection of fine meat. Seafoods with an ocean fresh flavor and real country tasting poultry and priced for real thrift. So for the finest in foods, go to your neighborhood Kroger store. <laughs> 